Okay, so the last new topic of the chapter is fluid force. Again, it's another nice application of integration. Now, there are two types of problems that we're going to deal with. One is constant depth. Like the first picture you see up there, you have a horizontal, let's say, sheet of glass or horizontal metal being immersed in water. But it has a constant depth. No matter where you are along the surface, the depth under the water is H. So this is going to be an easy problem for us. And then guess what, as, as we've been doing so far, we're going to look at situations where you don't have constant depth, you have variable depth. That's where we have to bring in more complicated methods such as integration. Okay, let me give you a few moments since you seem to be copying this down and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so here we have a, a horizontal plate immersed in water. It has constant depth. Now we're talking about fluid force. Let's think for a moment. You know, what does the force exerted upon an object will depend on? Think of a diver who dives in the water. You know, what does the force that that diver feels depend on? The first thing that comes to mind is what? Depth. How far did he go under the water, right? So that's very important depth because the further down you go, the more pressure, the more fluid force will be felt upon the object. Uh, and then there are two other things that are directly proportional with the fluid force, and they are the, uh, the weight of the liquid, which we call in terms of weight per unit um, volume. Because the, the denser the liquid is, the more pressure will be felt upon the object. That's W in our formula. H is the depth. Uh, actually, there was no handout today. And also the, the third quantity that fluid force varies directly with is the area. The larger the surface area, the more pressure will be felt, the more fluid force will be felt upon that object. So that's why fluid force has a very simple equation. As long as you have a constant depth, WHA, the weight of the liquid, the depth, and the area. The bigger the area, the more force will be felt upon that area. So. Let's take a look at the simple example. This one happens to be one from your textbook. If you like this one, just, just look at it. You know, don't even worry about writing this. This is directly from your textbook. I believe example number one. It says, what is the fluid force on the bottom of this container? Or it's like a hypothetical container. You have basically a flat sheet of metal on the bottom here that it has a depth of six feet. So what would be the total force felt upon that, that sheet of metal? We just learned fluid force for constant depth is WHA, right? We're trying to find now the force on the bottom, which is right here. Okay. We're, we're assuming this is in water. So what is the weight of water? 62.4, as always. Um, OK, how about the depth? No matter where you are, the depth is 6 feet, right? And how about the area of the sheet? 12, 4 times 3, or 12. This is the area. So let's just multiply all these numbers together and see what the fluid force will be on that sheet. OK, let me know what you're getting. So again, we just multiply the area of the sheet times the depth times the weight of the liquid in, in which it is immersed. And in this case, it's 62.4. And the final answer is, uh, did anybody get something? 44.92.8. Mm -hmm. Now, how about the units? Let's think about it. Weight of water is pounds per cubic feet. 
depth is in terms of feet. Area is, is, is in terms of square feet. So what would be the resulting unit for these questions? Right on top you have cubic feet, on the bottom you have cubic feet, so you're going to be left with just pounds. So the answer is going to be in terms of pounds, and the units of force usually we're going to use in this system is going to be pounds. Okay, as you can see, this is not a very interesting case. It's a constant depth problem. You know, you can teach it to somebody in even elementary school because it just consists of a multiplication, right? So the, the cases that are more interesting are the cases where, let's say that you, you were trying to find the fluid force on this side of this container, on the vertical side. Now, why is it more interesting and why is that more complicated for a college student to do? Because on the vertical side, the depth is not constant. Depending on where you are along the sheet, the depth is changing, right? So what we need to do is we need to slice it into horizontal units where the depth is a constant. Find the fluid force for one representative unit and then integrate it to find the total force. So th then it becomes more complicated to find the work, or rather the fluid force, when you're dealing with a vertical plate, and that's our next situation here, fluid force on a vertical plate. So in this particular case, I have a triangular uh, vertical plate immersed in water. Let's say that the depth of water is at the level y is equal to d. The question is, what would be the total fluid force exerted upon this triangular plate? what would be the total fluid force? So notice that on this, uh, on this triangular plate, I have selected a horizontal rectangle. Now, could I have selected a vertical rectangle here? Now remember, we're trying to make the problem easier by slicing it in a certain direction. By slicing it with a horizontal rectangle, I'm assuming that everywhere along this rectangle, that this rectangle is so thin that it's going to be a constant depth problem. And constant depth problems are really easy because it's just a multiplication, WHA. Okay? Now if I take a vertical rectangle, could I use a simple WHA formula for a vertical rectangle? Would this have a constant depth? No, over here there's going to be more pressure, here less pressure, less pressure, the further up you go, right? So you couldn't really slice this problem with, with vertical um, rectangles because it doesn't help you with the problem at all. To get the problem into an easier question, we slice it with horizontal rectangles where we assume depth is constant there. So now just for that thin rectangle, what is the fluid force, which I call delta FF, delta fluid force, meaning fluid force on the thin representative unit. So we just know the formula is WHA. Okay. W, once again, let's assume it's 62.4. Okay, H is the depth. What really matters is how much water is above that rectangle. Think of a diver. It doesn't matter how much water is below the diver. What matters is how much water is above the diver that's exerting that pressure. Uh, so in this case, how can I represent the depth here as a quantity in terms of y? The depth would be this distance from here to here, right? How much water is above the rectangle? If that line is y equals to d, where d is a constant, how would you represent that depth? d minus y, right? So this distance will be d minus y. Very good. OK, so that is my uh, depth. That's for H. And how about the area of this rectangle? Area is, as always, length times width. The width is delta Y. I'm assuming the, the length is L of Y. Again, that will come depending on what the problem is. So I'll just say L of Y, the length of the rectangle, times the thickness, dy or delta Y. And finally, how do I find the total fluid force? This is fluid force for just one thin rectangle. How can we find a total fluid force? Integrate it, right? Basically, you first you add n of them, and you take the limit as n goes to infinity, 
and that becomes the integral basically we've done it many times in this chapter so this will be 62.4 times again that's assuming it is water the integral of d minus y times the length of the rectangle in terms of y times dy and how about limits of integration Since I have a delta y, limits should come from the y-axis, right? So from where to where are these rectangles physically existing? From the point y equals to a to the point y equals to b, correct? On the y-axis, those are the limits of our region in the y direction. So that means we're going to go from a to b to find the fluid force. Okay. So on the test, I will only, only give you this formula, WHA. So depending on the problem, I expect you to go from there uh, that to set up your integral. And just remember, first do it for a representative rectangle from there integrated to find for the entire region. Now let's do an example. The question states, find the fluid force, find the fluid force across the given vertical plate. And this will be the question for every one of them. I'll just give you different shapes of vertical plates. But the question is always the same, find the fluid force. And each of these, we're going to assume, assume that the plates is um, completely immersed in water. Okay, so here's the shape. This, the first one is going to be a triangular plate. Okay, first I'm going to give you the shape of it, and then we need to decide where would we put it on a coordinate system. So the shape of it looks like this. Let's try it again. So a triangular plate. Uh, the dimensions on the top is two feet, two feet across the top. And the dimensions, the height of the rect uh, triangle is five feet. So the first question that we face is, how would you put this on a coordinate system? Would you put it like this, maybe? Or would you put it like this? The first or the second? You have a choice. You could really go either way. But which one do you think will make the problem a little bit easier? Go that way. For example, if you have a circle, I would always put uh, the center of the circle at zero zero. No matter what, uh, whether it's a hemi, uh, you know, half a circle or a full circle, put the center, the zero zero at uh, at the center at the zero zero point. In this case, it would help if you, if you put it like this. Okay, so we're going to take that shape, put it in a coordinate system, and the way I'm going to put it is as follows. I'm going to put it right through the center, the y-axis. Okay. So let's assume there is symmetry there. It's supposed to be symmetrical. Okay, so let's put some coordinates now on this So what would be this coordinate here? 
than what would be discordant here. Since it was two feet across and we're putting this right through the center, this should be one. And on the top, that should be five. Now, why did I put it? Why did I put it that way? Because I want to be able to do similar triangle ratios. And if I put it right there, the similar triangle ratio will be easy. Or if you prefer, you could get the equation of this line. And if that line goes to the point zero, zero, you get the easiest possible equation for the line, like y equals m times x. So that's why it's easier um, if you put the coordinate system right through the center for this triangle. OK, so we know we're trying to find fluid force. And we know the formula fluid force equals WHA. First, we're going to do it for one thin rectangle through the region. Just pick a rectangle. And we know we have to pick it this way, so it becomes a constant depth problem. The thickness is delta Y. OK, so let's write down, what is the fluid force on this thin rectangle? W is always the same, 62.4. OK, what will H be, the depth? We're assuming for all of these questions that these figures are right, uh, you know, completely immersed in water. So what would be H here, the depth? The depth for that rectangle. How much? Remember, depth is how much water is above the rectangle. That's what's exerting the pressure. That's what should be taken under consideration. So in this case, what is our depth? 5 minus y. Okay. And how about the area of the rectangle, that, that thin rectangle, our representative unit that is? It's length times um, height. The height is easy, uh, or the width of the rectangle is going to be delta y. But how about the length of the rectangle? Any suggestions what I could use for that? I want this distance from here to here. How could I represent that? Distance from the center to the side is x, right? And because of symmetry, what do I have there? 2x, right? Because distance from here to here, that is x but you have doubled that amount for the length of your rectangle, that would be 2x. So the length of your rectangle is 2x, and the width is delta y. Now, there is a problem with this at the moment. What, what do you see as the problem? x in a land of the y's, right? When you see the dy, you know everything should be in terms of y. We've got to get rid of that x. This is why I was thinking, OK, we're going to need the equation of the line or similar triangle ratios to write x in terms of y. I think it's a little bit easier to use just the similar triangle ratios, although you could certainly get the equation of that line if you wanted to. So here's the situation. We have a triangle where this side I'm calling x, and this is to the x-axis. This, uh, this is my y. For the actual one, what, what is this distance for the bigger triangle? One. And how about? What is the, the height of the entire triangle? Five. So now we can write the similar triangle ratios, right? In the big triangle, the ratio of one to five equals in the small triangle, the ratio of what to what? We did base over heights in the big one, so we should keep the same consistency. So x over y in the small one. Um, okay. So I need x in terms of y, right? So let's solve for x here. So y is equal to 5x. So x is equal to y over 5. And I can go back up here and replace my x. 2 times x. Instead of x, I'm going to write y over 5. So now everything looks good. And what is it that I need to do to find total fluid force? integrates this quantity. This was the fluid force on one rectangle, one thin horizontal rectangle. We're going to find the fluid force in the entire figure by integrating. So fluid force equals the integral of. Uh, while I do that, I will factor outside the constants to make it a little bit easier. So let's say fluid force equals. Okay. 
I will take out size 62.4. What else could I take outside? Two, and what else? Exactly, basically two fifths can be taken outside. Okay. And inside I will have phi minus y times y. Delta y becomes dy in the limiting process. And how about the limits of integration? Um, let's look at the rectangles. From where to where are these rectangles going to vary? From where to where? Remember, the thickness is delta y, so things in terms of the y values. Exactly, uh, Grace, it should go from 0 to 5. Because, because we have a dy, the rectangles, again, are going along the y-axis, anywhere from y equals 0 to y equals 5. That's where the rectangles are located. And the rest should be pretty easy, right? So let's go ahead and finish this integral now. First, I'm going to multiply the y. I just simplify the constant a little bit. Okay, this is the integral of phi y minus y squared dy. Now let's integrate it. So go piece by piece as always. Again, minus zero, so the zero doesn't contribute anything. And again, at this point, you could go to the calculator, but I could also get common denominators if I need to. I could multiply this by 3 over 3 and this one by 2 over 2. And if I do that, again, I notice on the top I have 3 times 125 minus 2 times 125. That's 1 times 125 over the common denominator of 6. Again, simplify it any way you're comfortable with, or use a calculator if you need to. Um, and let's see what the final answer is coming out to be there. Uh, let's see, I heard 520. Can you guys confirm that? Excellent. Okay, 520. And the units once again? will be pounds anytime you find fluid force uh, with these, this unit system, you know, if you have um, weight of water in terms of pounds per cubic feet, everything else given in terms of feet, the final answer will be in terms of pounds. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another type of problem. Again, we're still going to find fluid force across a vertical plate. Uh, and again, these vertical plates could be, for example, the end and walls of a swimming pool, or it could be the end and wall of a uh, trough or an aquarium, or, um, or it could be the window of a submarine. So we're thinking about vertical units at the moment, which is they're independent of anything else attached to them, but you would do the same way if you had any vertical wall under the water, this is the way you would calculate fluid force. Okay, let's do a circular plate next. It's gonna be a semicircular plate. So same question. Okay, I want to go back. Let's see, where was my example? Um, I think right there. Okay, so I'm going to copy the same problem. And you can assume it's the same exact problem throughout this section. It's just the shape will be different. Find the fluid force across a given vertical plate. And this time the vertical plate is a semicircle. One where the circular side is on the bottom and the flat side is on the top. So, you know, for, for, this could be, for example, the end point of a container full of water. So you're trying to find at the end of that container how much force is being exerted. So you, you need to know what kind of material you can use there to um, overcome that pressure. Okay, so how would you place this on a coordinate system? So I'll give you a few choices. Let's use my magic marker here, which disappears afterwards. Okay, so one way would be like this. This is one way. And I'll show you one more way. 
Another, another way would be like this. Which one do you think would be easier, the first way or the second way? Uh, I heard the second way, this way, uh, and why? Because the flat end touches the axis. In other words, the center of your semicircle is being placed at zero, zero. Because think about it. If you have a circle like this, say the radius of the circle is one unit, let's say, just for the sake of the example. What is the equation of the circle? Is it x squared plus y squared equals to one if I place it like this? No, because this has been shifted up. The center is no longer at zero, zero. This equation that I have in red here, that would have an equation as follows. x squared plus exactly equals to r squared, in this case, 1 squared or 1. But it becomes more complicated to solve for um, your x variable. So that's why we usually prefer to put the center right at 0, 0. But know that it can be done. If you prefer to do it this way, it actually can be done. It's just going to be a little bit more work, OK? For some questions, actually, if you have an interest, we can do it both ways so you can see how the answer comes out to be the same. Now, I need to give you some dimensions here. Uh, let's say that the entire distance across the top of this semicircle is six feet. So, the, so this distance from here to here, let's assume that is six feet. So now I'm going to put it on a coordinate system. Okay, and it should be flat on the top, and the zero, zero will be right at the center. OK. So what is this point right here on the x-axis? And by symmetry, that will be 3, right? And what is this point down here? Once again, because the radius is 3 and this is below the uh, y-axis, it's going to be negative 3, right? Because this is minus point 0, comma 0 right here. So distances below that will be negative. Okay. So what is the first thing I should do to find the fluid force across this container? What should I do first? If we have a difficult question, remember always to break it down into an easier question. What is an easier question here? Pick a rectangle. Find a fluid force across that rectangle, right? So let's pick a rectangle. And do I have a choice? Like, could I pick it this way or that way? Could I do either one? What would be a problem with picking this rectangle from your region? This one. It no longer has a constant depth, right? So your, your simple question, which is supposed to be a simple multiplication of three things, WHA, you couldn't use it for that rectangle because it doesn't have a constant depth, right? So that's why we don't want a rectangle like this ever when we do fluid force problems. It should always be a horizontal rectangle. OK, we know the thickness is delta Y. So the fluid force across that rectangle equals WHA, because we assume it's constant depth, W62.4. OK, um, H is going to be a little bit problematic here, because we're dealing with below the y-axis distances. Any thoughts why, what it might be? First, let's point what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find out how to represent this distance in terms of y, the depth. Now, if that had been a little bit above the x-axis, you would call that distance y, right? Uh, what, what could we call this distance? How about 0 minus y, um, as Courtney suggested? 0 minus y. In other words, negative y. Now, let's check that to see if you're really comfortable with that idea. So, for example, Let's say that this rectangle is at the point y is equal to negative 1. What would the answer be in terms of depth? You put negative 1 in here, you would have 0 minus negative 1. 
the depth is one unit, right? And that makes sense, right? What if that rectangle was at a point y equals to negative 2? We would put here 0 minus negative 2. Yes, the depth is in the two units, right? So that really works. It does the trick 0 minus y to represent um, that distance that we have marked here as h. Okay. And how about the area? The area of the rectangle. That's what we want because we're trying to find a fluid force across that rectangle. Length times width, right? What is the length here? I want to know what this total distance is from here to here. It's not necessarily going to be 6 because it depends on where you are, right? Only at the top it's going to be 6. In general, it should be a variable. And would everybody agree uh, with Courtney that it's going to be 2x, just like the last problem? As long as you put the center right through the middle of your uh, figure, uh, you know, usually it's going to end up being 2x. Because this is from here to here. That's x, right, this distance? But now you have to double that amount. Okay, so um, the area of our thin rectangle is 2x times the thickness, which is delta y. All right. Exactly. That's right. We have x in the world of the y's once again, right? So we've got to get rid of it. We cannot use similar triangles this time, right? So what can we use? The equation of the circle, right? Because that x is always going to be on the circle, and the equation of the circle relates the x with the y, right? So here we have um, x squared for the circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to what? R squared, since R is equal to 3 units, it's 9. Okay, I need to know what X is, so I'm going to solve for X in here. X squared is 9 minus Y squared. And X is, normally you could say plus or minus the square root, but I'm thinking of the positive distance, so that's why I'm going to take the positive square root here. 9 minus Y squared. Okay, so we go back here and put everything in. 62.4 times negative y times 2 times x, where x is root 9 minus y squared, dy, or delta y. Okay, what do I do with all this now? This is the fluid force across one thin rectangle, right? Now I must integrate to find the total fluid force. And if I do that, what will be my limits of integration? Always put the lower limit on the bottom and the higher limit on the top. So negative 3 to 0, right? Negative 3 to 0. Let's take out the constants up front. We have 2 times 62.4. Inside we have, actually, you know what, for this particular case, um, I'm going to keep the negative 2y in there because I'm going to need it for my u sub anyway. So let me take those two. You can do it any way you prefer, but for this case, I find it helpful to leave the two inside the integral. Okay, would everybody agree with the setup that we have so far? I have to give you a warning, and that is students get very confused after we cover this section with the problems here versus the problems in work done section. So I, I would strongly recommend, after we finish this section, go back and do a couple more questions from the work done section, uh, because they usually have circular cross sections like pi times x squared. Here you usually have straight uh, figures like 2x, not pi x squared. So, so it would really help if you go back and do some examples. Okay, we need to integrate this. Uh, let's do u substitution. Let u be 9 minus y squared. du is negative 2y dy. So already I have a negative 2y dy in there, right? So I'm going to replace that by du. 
and this whole thing becomes the square root of u du. So let me see if everybody agrees with me on that. Okay, now let's integrate. So 62.4 times u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. And don't plug in the limits yet, right? First, bring you back the u uh, in terms of y. And u was 9 minus y squared. Then the limits, which are from negative 3 to 0. It's important to always do upper limit minus limits. Uh, so first, plug in the 0 for y. See what you're getting minus plug in the negative 3 for y and subtract the two answers. Let's see what we get there. Let's so if we plug in a 0 for y, I get 9 to the 3 halves. That is the square root of 9 to the third. What would I get if I plug in a negative 3 for y? Exactly, because negative 3 squared is 9, and you'll have 9 minus 9, which is 0. So plugging the lower limit doesn't bring anything extra. So then let's just go ahead and evaluate what we have. Uh, we could even simplify 3 goes into 27 9 times. But either way you do it, please let me know what you're getting as your final answer. 1,000 something, I believe. 1123.2 pounds. What happened there? Okay, any questions about the solution? Any questions? Again, could this question be done the other way if you put the circle above the x-axis? It certainly can be done that way. The only problem is, again, you're going to end up with a possibly more difficult integral because your x is not going to be so simple. You have to use the updated equation of the circle where the center is no longer at 0, comma 0. Okay, I'm going to give you another example, and this time I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about it. Um, okay, this next example, all I'm going to ask you is set it up. You don't have to integrate it. The integral becomes actually a bit complicated. Just set it up. So same question as before, but only set up. Don't do anything else. Um, so the so this time what I have is a circle. But the water level is not right above the top. It's further up from the center. It's 10 units above this, uh, the center of the circle. So let's say this is the water level over here. And from the center to there is 10 units. Okay. Okay, this figure is going to be totally not up to scale because the radius of the figure, um, I want you to use 2. R is equal to 2. So you decide how you want to place the coordinate system here. And all I'm asking you is write an integral that represents the fluid force across this um, circular perhaps it's the window of a submarine or some circular vertical plate, how much force is exerted upon it, assuming that the depth is 10 feet.
Okay, so I choose to put my x and y coordinates in such a way that the center is at 0, 0, because again, this will give me the easiest version of the equation of a circle to deal with. Okay, now we want to write the fluid force across one thin rectangle with, with thickness delta y. And what is the length of this rectangle? That part hasn't changed, right? Just like the last problem, that part is still 2x, right? Okay, so first of all, delta fluid force on that rectangle. Again, the formula is WHA. W is 62.4. Okay, basically the main part that you have to be careful about is the H part, right? Because other than that, it's a very similar question to what we did before. Okay, so now the water level is at the point because it's from the center of the circle, you can call that point y equals 10, correct? Oh, hold on. No, no, no. You might be fine. Okay, so what I need to know right now is what is the depth for this rectangle? What is that distance given by the green arrow? Any thoughts? Uh, would everybody agree with Joshua 10 minus y? Because distance from here to here would have been y, right? The whole thing is 10, so that's the difference, which is 10 minus y. So that is the depth for that one rectangle. And then 2x, that's going to be 2 times the square root of the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals to what? What was the radius of the circle? Two units, so this point is two. So x squared plus y squared equals to four, right? Because two squared is four. And solve for x from there, you're going to have the square root of what? Four minus y squared, and the thickness is delta y. Now you see why I said just set it up and don't integrate because the integral becomes quite an involved integral here because total fluid force will simply be the integral of the above, which uh, if you pull out the constants, and how about the limits of integration? Look at the rectangles, from where to where are they extending? The rectangles are extending from where to where. This is a full circle, right? This was this could be again as you know a circular window. Um, so you want the total fluid force, and you couldn't really double things because there isn't that much symmetry because um, you know the fluid force the, the, on the top and on the bottom they're not necessarily going to be the same. So you couldn't double things. So what should you say then? The limits will be from where to where. What is the lowest point for a rectangle here? Negative 2. And the highest point for a rectangle would be here, which is mm -hmm. positive 2. Because of the radius of students, right? So in any given direction, the extreme uh, points are, are going to be negative 2 to positive 2. Now, I want to take a moment to go over with you this one once again, the 10 minus y part. You know, what if your rectangle had been in the, selected from the region that was below the x-axis? Would 10 minus y still work? Let's think about it for a minute. If your rectangle was over here, again, let me choose this magic marker so it disappears later on. If I pick it from here, what would be the distance of that entire thing? Say that's the point y equals to negative 1. So what would be that distance from that rectangle to the top of the figure? Say this is the point y equals to negative 1. The entire distance we know is 10 plus 1, which is 11, 11 feet, right? Would 10 minus y trick work there? 10 minus negative 1, that would be 11, right? So that is really working no matter where your rectangle is, whether it's above or below the x-axis. That uh, description of the depth distance is really working. 
so, so this is a really good way of setting this up. Now, there are ways to integrate this, but I'm not going to get into that today. Let me just tell you the answer. If you use your graphing calculator, and everybody knows how to use function integration key, right? F and I until we discussed it in the arc length section, et cetera. If you do this, the answer will be 7,841.4 pounds. Yes, the sequence to enter to the calculator is you do FNINT, which is under the math menu. You enter the function you're entering, uh, comma X, comma the limits of integration. That's how we enter it. Uh, it's under math, maybe nine. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you one more way of getting this answer, which is really neat. Now that we talked about center of mass last class, there is a way to get, at least to check your answers, uh, using a center of mass approach. And here's how we can do it with the center of mass. Now, please do that after class if you're trying to enter it on the calculator. And, and I'm going to be here if you have questions about how to enter it. Uh, please try it after class. Um, but right now, I want to give you, give you another method of doing the same problem because it's a really neat method to check your answers. So I'm going to call this checking. Okay. Let's look at that figure one more time. You know, the way you can use the ideal center of mass is as follows. You can say, okay, this entire circle could be assumed to be concentrated or located, this entire mass or entire area is located at, at the center of mass. What is the center of mass of a circle? Its center, in this case, is 0, 0, 0, right? Okay, so imagine this entire area of the circle being concentrated at 0, 0. So you have a constant depth problem, right? Uh, what is the area of, a, of this particular circle? Because we want WHA, W is 62.4. Okay. We're going to talk about H in a moment. A is the area of the circle. What is the area of the entire circle? Pi R squared, right? What is R in this case? 2, 2 squared is 4. This is the area of the circle. We're assuming right now that this entire circle is, 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 is as if it's placed at the center of mass with that area at the center of mass. What is the distance from the center of mass to the top of that liquid? In other words, the depth to the center of mass. What is that distance to the center of mass? 10, right? So all we have to do is then multiply this by 10. And let's see what we get. So this is a different approach. If you can easily find the center of mass of your region, you can assume the entire uh, plate as if, as if it's just existing at that point of center of mass. Then you can use the constant depth problem, uh, which is a simple multiplication of three quantities. So let's just do 62.4 times 10, of course that was easy, times 4 pi. Did we get the same exact answer? 7,841.4. So that's a really neat way of checking the answer, but the only way you can apply that is if there's an easy center of mass. For example, what if this had been a semicircular plate, something like this? Do we know an easy way of finding a uh, center of mass of a semicircular plate? There is no easy way for that one. I mean, there could be formulas that engineers use over and over because they have generalized it, but if, for our uh, purposes, if you had to find the center of mass of the semicircular plate, you're going to spend just as much time and perhaps more than finding doing the problem the right way using the integration method, so it may not be worth doing it there. But if you notice that it's a very simple figure where the figure center of mass is very easily calculated, then you can use this method, if nothing else, to check your answers, okay? Uh, that question that I gave you today to think about, uh, I want you to do it with the center of mass method to check your answers, okay? Do it the regular way, the integral way, uh, that the water tank example I gave you earlier today, and then do it the center of mass way because that's a full, full spherical tank. The center of mass will be very easy to calculate. So the work required to lift that object is going to be as if you're just lifting the center of mass of, of that, uh, an object of that mass. So same answer, 7,841. Okay, I'm going to give you one more example. Okay. 
it's going to be a triangular plate. And this time, um, the water level is three feet above the top. So you go three feet above the top. And that's where the water level is. And the dimensions of the triangle, this side is nine nine feet and the other side is six feet okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about how would you set it up where would you place your axes and then we'll come back and discuss the solutions. 